Now, you can ask the, the physicists about this. Do they actually think that physical objects exist mm. and have specific properties like position, mm -hmm. momentum, and spin when they're not observed? And the, the technical question is to ask, is local realism true? Realism means that these properties like position, momentum, and spin exist even when they're not observed. They have definite values. And locality means that they have influences that propagate no faster than the speed mm -hmm. of light. And we have tested whether local realism is true over and over again, and it turns out it's false. So it, this is independent of whether quantum mechanics and general relativity are right or not. Or not. Local realism is false. And something else called non-contextual realism, the idea, do, do particles have their positions, momentum, and spin, definite values, and do the, value that the values they have not depend on how we measure them? That's the non-contextual. And it turns out non-contextual realism, the claim that they have their values and the values are definite and don't depend on how we measure them, that's also false. Now, I know that <clears throat> most people who study consciousness neuroscientists, philosophers, philosophers of mind, think you don't need quantum physics to explain any of this stuff. That's the wrong level of analysis. I mean, what, what matters is, you know, what's happening at the level of neurons, neurotransmitters, synaptic connections, all of that stuff. The other stuff is irrelevant, basically, to our understanding of consciousness. You obviously disagree, right? Right. I would, you're, you're right that I would say 99% of the of my colleagues in this field think that we don't need to look at quantum effects. There's uh, one of uh, one big exception. Uh, Penrose and Hameroff have a theory in which the quantum states of certain microtubules in, in neurons of the brain are, are critical to their theory of consciousness. And most people <clears throat> think that theory most is most of my is, colleagues they're, dismiss they're that. Uh, well, well, they're not willing to say Penrose is a crackpot. Yeah, Penrose is not a crackpot. Yeah, I mean, right. Penrose is so much smarter than me, I have no idea how much smarter than me he is. He, he's, he's brilliant. And, and, and Stuart Hameroff is, you know, I mean, he, he's a, a, an anesthesiologist, and he's working with Penrose. And I'm glad that they have that theory. I mean, it's, it's but I, I, I don't think it's true. But the rest of my colleagues who are just looking at the classical physics of, of neural activity, of course, they can't explain this hard problem of consciousness. So they're, they're dismissing quantum effects, and, but they don't have a theory that works, so I mean, all bets are off. My, from the physicist's point of view, um, the idea that there's a, a distinction between the classical world and the quantum world, which was uh, so-called part of the Copenhagen interpretation, that's really fallen into disfavor recently. Most, what, what physicists are now finding is that they can get quantum effects from billions of atoms. So you can, these are like, we're getting almost like visible stuff here. You certainly you can look through, they're almost at the size of like blood cells and so forth. You can get quantum superpositions and so forth. And, and it's, it seems like it's just, we haven't been clever enough to figure out how to show this stuff on macroscopic levels. In other words, the real physics from the physics point of view is quantum physics. And the idea of classical mechanics being something separate from that is, that was an old Copenhagen interpretation, which I think not too many people hold anymore.